hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. As you can see, we are looking extra fantastic today. And I'm gonna be showing you guys how I do my makeup when I am Princess Ariel. Now, I use the Disney Parks makeup as an inspiration and I use the updated version, which was around 2016, I believe is when they started to update everything. So um, this is the new updated makeup version for her, which goes with her teal gown, which I am sporting today. Um, and I'm gonna show you guys in depth on how I do my base as well, because my princess base goes for every single character that I do. So it'll be very in depth in this video, but I'll kind of skip over to the next ones and we'll refer you guys back to the beginning of this one. Um, but I hope you guys like today's video. The finished makeup product is really, really pretty, really simple and just overall very effective. So it's really, really fun. Um, I love you guys so, so, so much. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Hello everyone and welcome back to the lagoon. We are here in our lovely little lagoon. I'm in a lovely rowboat looking at the view with all of my makeup products set up and we switched over to some straight on lighting so that you guys can really get um, a straight ahead view on what I'm doing and I'm gonna explain to you um, how I do my aerial makeup. Like I said in the beginning, this is inspired by the Disney Parks makeup. This is not inspired by the movie or um, just like general cosplay. This is almost to a T followed to what the princesses wear in the Disney parks. So I'm gonna get started and show you guys how I do it, how I get my base. I use the same base for all of my characters. Um, and it's pretty simple, only takes a few uh, products and they're relatively inexpensive. So I'm gonna show you guys um, how I start off with my base and let's get started. Alrighty you guys, so I have my hair clipped out of the way and up in a little ponytail, a little clippy. Um, so that way we can get started because we need a perfect base. Um, my skin is actually doing pretty okay. I have a little scar right here um, from a past little blemish, but that is what this base is for, is it's gonna help you guys really brighten up your skin and almost in this little like mask area, make your face really nice and bright because it's gonna give us that, you know, friendly, warm, uh, youthful glow. So what I'm gonna start with is a primer. Now I like to use the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer and this stuff is really, really nice. Um, it keeps my makeup on all day. I did just drop my beauty blender. I'm not very professional at this, you guys. Um, so what I'm gonna do is take my e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. I'm gonna do two pumps. That's usually um, sort of my magical number is two little pumps and you get it warmed up in your hands and just Really, I like to get it really like in the edges of my nose, under my eyes, because that's where a lot of my uh, makeup tends to crease is around my nose and my eyes. And this stuff gets sticky really quick, so you have to work fast. And just like that, you can already see it's pretty tacky. So it's gonna keep our makeup on for a really long time. I also like to put a little bit on my eyelids and this is just gonna make sure that our foundation, um, when we put it on our eyelids, stays and helps sort of act as a primer for our eyeshadow. So just like that, our uh, primer is done. Um, and next I'm gonna use my foundation. I use the Fit Me foundation in the shade 115. This seems to be pretty good for me because I like my foundation to be a little bit lighter and like perfectly almost my skin tone. And I have really pale skin as you can see. I'm like the real life Snow White. Um, so yeah, I use this. It's matte and poreless and it's really, really um, long lasting. It's pretty full coverage. I mean, you'll see even without concealer, um, it covers my little red marks pretty well. So what I'm gonna do is put some on the back of my hand and I'm just gonna start applying this. And while I apply this, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my journey with Princess Ariel. Um, now, Princess Ariel means a lot to me because she actually was the first princess that got me started in my princessing journey. And what I mean by that is she was the first character that I ever got to be friends with or play. Um, and that is because everyone, you know, was like, you have her personality, you have her features kind of, which is true. Um, and so I was like, you know what, I'll give it a try. Of course I wanted to be like Cinderella or Aurora or like the ball gown princesses, which Ariel does have a ball gown, but, um, Ariel was never one of my favorite princesses up until I started really getting close with her and playing with her all the time. And um, the more I got to play with her and be with her, uh, the more she quickly became my favorite character and is now, I'd say, one of my favorite princesses that I get to portray. 
um, for events and things. And that is because she is just so fun and bubbly and has just a zest for life. And she's also a flippin' mermaid. Who doesn't like mermaids, you guys? So um, she's super duper fun and adorable and just everyone loves The Little Mermaid. And with the new movie coming out, she's kind of having a resurgence. Um, obviously, Halle Bailey ate and slayed that role so, so much. She so deserves all the praise that she's getting right now um, and doesn't deserve all the nasty, hateful comments that people are going rampant about. Um, I have seen the movie twice already and I literally cried um, <laughs> each time at the beginning and the end because that movie is just so special to me and the music and the soundtrack just really makes me emotional and I really, really love it. So yeah, Ariel means a lot to me because she was the first princess that I ever got to play and that obviously means I've had a lot of practice um, doing her makeup and things like that. So um, I have gotten to know her very well. So as you can see, I still have a little bit of redness, um, but it's a pretty flawless base. I mean, also um, really remember to take your foundation down your neck. Please remember that because we're also gonna powder our neck just like we powder our foundation and that lightens up our skin a little bit. So you wanna make sure that your neck matches your face. Otherwise you look a little kooky. And believe me, kids notice. Um, I offer many different versions of Ariel. I offer her ball gown look, which you guys have seen in the intro in this video. I also offer her pink dinner look, um, which is mostly only seen in the movie. Um, and I also offer her uh, ball gown, like I said in the beginning, that is the Disney Parks one. So that's what she can be seen in at Disneyland and most Disney parks around the world. Um, I'm gonna go in for concealer with the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Concealer. I really, really love this stuff. You guys, it has the perfect little tip on the end and you just twist it. And what we're gonna do is apply it right under our eyes in a little bit of a triangle. Also on our chin, the tip of our nose, as well as up the bridge of our nose into a straight line up our forehead. And then what I'm gonna do is do two lines out of my forehead, sort of like that, kind of like Simba from The Lion King. Um, and then also just anywhere where you have a little bit of a blemish. And for me, that's wherever I have just like redness that day. Um, for me, that's oftentimes around my nose a little bit. And just like that, we're gonna start blending. So since we started under our eyes, that's had the most time to set. So we're just gently gonna pat this in under our eyes. Back to what I was saying about the different versions of Ariel that I offer for my company and the companies I work with is I also offer um, mermaid Ariel. So she has a full on tail. So if your event has a pool, Ariel can technically swim in your pool. Um, and so that's pretty cool. I love getting to be in the water. And um, yeah, I offer many different versions of her. Partly because she is my fave, so I make sure I put a lot of effort into the options that we have for her and all of her gorgeous little outfits, um, which I truly love. I'm saving up for a new Ariel dress, for a new um, teal ball gown like you guys saw in the intro to this video. Um, now that's because the one I have is from Etsy. Someone lovingly handcrafted it. Um, and it is so beautiful. However, it's um, more of a budget version, which means it's not gonna have the amount of detail or the same fabrics that they use in the Disney parks, rather than some that you can buy, like on Angel Secret, which is where I get a lot of my gowns, um, like my Aurora gown. And what I really like about them is they do custom sizing. And that's really nice because I have a little bit of a longer torso. And I'm also tall-ish, like I've mentioned before, I'm around 5'8", so sometimes when things are meant to be floor length, I need them custom done. Um, so that's always really nice that they offer custom sizing. Okay, you guys, so now that we have our base almost complete, this is gonna be like the main longest portion of this video. I'll try and add some time lapses in here for the other things, but I wanted to show you guys how I get this base because um, this is probably gonna be my first princess makeup tutorial so far for the characters that I play, and I will continue to make these as I go along. However, I wanted to start off with Ariel since she um, is one that I have a lot of practice with. Um, so next thing I'm gonna do is take my air spun powder. This stuff is really, really nice. I'm gonna take a big fluffy powder brush and you guys, we're just gonna set our entire face with powder. 
and that means use this quite liberally because you want to make sure your makeup stays set all day. And sometimes when I play two different princesses, um, I have to take off the eye makeup and redo it because they have different eyeshadow looks is like the main difference. Um, and oftentimes this base will last me through two different parties. So if I don't want to have to completely redo my makeup, I make sure that my base is really nice and, you know, set. Um, and the powder also helps give us sort of that animated, like, flawless look. So I'm just brushing that all down my face. Especially my T-zone, since that's where I get a little bit more oily. And under our eyes. Also get your ears because I like to put foundation everywhere where I'm showing skin. Powdering down our neck so that it's the same color. And just like that, you guys, you have a flawless princess base ready for the other elements of your makeup to go on. It's just super natural, um, matches your skin pretty well. Um, obviously, we don't have much color in our face, so it looks a little ghostly, but we'll warm it up with some contour and some blush. Um, but you guys, this is how I do my princess base. Um, it's gonna be like this for every single princess that I do, so I probably will include this in every video, like I mentioned previously. Um, I'll mainly focus on the sort of placement of the eyeshadow and the eye makeup. So um, let's move on to the fun stuff um, and move on to the eye makeup. Okay, you guys, so I have a reference photo of the Parks makeup just to show you guys. I have this stuff memorized. I do this like with my eyes closed. But as you can see, um, her eye makeup is pretty orange and gold, actually. Um, and her brows, of course, will do the brows and the lip. The lips are a little bit hard because there's many different versions. This is the older Parks version, which is obviously a different dress. And in this, it's a much more natural look with a much more red lip. I like to still use a little bit darker of a lip mixed with the newer eye makeup. So what you're gonna need for this, I'm gonna give you a brief overview because I'm probably gonna do some time lapses in here, is a palette with some golds and some sort of orangey hues. Now this is the one that I use because it has this color right here. This kind of little trifecta is like what I like to use, this whole area. And I also have an actual Disney Princess palette that I got at Box Lunch, I believe. And this one also has many different golds. And we're gonna be using this gold and this pink. Um, so that's what you're gonna need in terms of eyeshadow. You can also use any type of glitter or shimmer more so. You don't wanna do like chunky glitter, but thin, fine glitter for a little bit of sparkle is always a good option. Um, for eyeliner, I like to use this e.l.f. eyeliner because I used to do her eye makeup with a little bit more of a dramatic wing because I'm a vintage gal, I'm a pinup girl, so I like a little bit more of a cat eye. However, Ariel does have a cat eye, but it's very small and it's a very different way of doing it. So I'll show you guys how I do that. But this is an ink pot style, so that means it is gonna have sort of a little like brush like that and it's very precise, so you're gonna need that. You're also gonna need some lashes. These, I will try and put a link in my bio for these, in the bio of this video, um, because these lashes are actually, believe it or not, from a friend of a friend that I have heard from, because I have many different cast member friends on TikTok. They have hooked me up, and I get these on Amazon. These are the exact lashes that the princesses use in the Disney parks. Now, these have been worn like twice, I think. But as you can see, the edges have a little bit more of a cat eye, and that's because the trick that one of the girls taught me, who used to be friends with Anna, I believe, um, is when you cut off the edge of the lash to fit it to your eye, you take that piece and you glue it back on in the inside of the eye, of the eyelash, um, just to give it a little bit more of a cat eye. And so that's a fun little trick. These are 82s uh, in the color black. Um, and they're pretty natural when they're on. They don't have too much curl. They're pretty straight out with a little bit of lift on the end. And of course for that, you're gonna need any type of lash glue. You're also gonna need any type of mascara. The one that I use is this Rocket Volume Mascara. It's really nice. I get it in dark brown instead of black because I find that black sort of darkens up my eyes a little bit too much. You're also gonna need a white eye pencil. And I'm not talking like cream or nude. I'm talking white. You're gonna need a stark white pencil. I use the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil. That's pretty popular in the princess community. Um, and what you're gonna do is we're gonna line our waterline to make our eyes pop. 
So that's all you're gonna need in terms of materials for the eye makeup. Um, pretty simple and it's pretty easy and you don't need too much technique. So I'm gonna show you guys how I do that. Um, so let's get started. Okay, you guys, I zoomed in a little bit more so you guys can get a nice close-up view. Don't mind my brows, I need to wax them a little bit. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in with this palette. This is the You Can Be Twilight and Dusk palette. I believe I got this on Amazon. Um, it's really, really nice. It's lasted me almost two years now, so it's very nice. You're also gonna need a variety of brushes. I have mine in these little adorable vintage tea containers. Um, I thought they reminded me of Ariel. They are very oceanic and piratey. Uh, so what you're gonna need is a smaller fluffy brush, much like this one. This one's pretty simple. Um, it's just a nice little fluffy one. You're also gonna need a bigger fluffy brush. This is gonna help us blend. Um, now you're also gonna need a smaller crease brush or two. Um, these are two that I like. They're pretty small, so you can do a lot with them. Um, and I'll show you guys what we're gonna do. So taking that bigger, um, that bigger brush, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some of this um, color amethyst, which is this pink right here. And we're gonna take amethyst, and what we're gonna do is, sorry if I'm looking at my mirrors down here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that color, and we're gonna really start putting this on just like the outer half of our eye. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side, just applying it to the outer edge. I mean, like, look at this, it's so easy. You just kind of slap it on there. Um, the reason I'm blending in the inner corner is because my foundation was creasing a little bit. So you can just blend that out. Um, and just like that, making sure it's focused on the outer edge, almost up to our brow. Just like that, like a quarter of the eyeshadow is done. It's that simple. So next what I'm gonna do is take the color Saffron, which is this sort of orange right here. And this is where you're gonna need a little bit more caution because I'm gonna take a smaller brush like this one and we're gonna start blending this into the outer corners of our eye. Now this color is really pigmented, so be careful. Um, to start just blending this into our crease. Just like that, you can see we're starting to get that orangey color. It looks crazy right now, you guys, but trust me, it all mellows out in the end. So, like I did on the other side, I'm taking this color. Now I do this with my eyes open just because I want to make sure that I'm getting the right shading. Now what I like to do is if it gets a little bit too intense, like this side is a little bit too up high, take your powder brush and just dust off the edges and this just mutes it out with a little bit of powder that's left over and it also helps set your makeup. So just like that our eyes are almost complete. Now I'm going to take a little bit of this red, um, this color Turkish Delight right here, this little red color. And I just dropped my palette, are you kidding me? Excuse me while I go dive underwater to go grab that. Okay, grabbed it, my apologies. So just like we're gonna do on the outer corner with the other color, we're gonna do just in the crease of the outer corner with this red color. Cause this is such a dark color, you don't wanna, you don't wanna make this overpower the other eyeshadow. I am always a big fan of using my fingers for eye makeup because it really helps get you what you need. Now, what I'm gonna do is take a couple different gold options because there's a gold color called Eden right here, which is this lovely gold. And this one is really, really shimmery and really pretty, but also in my Disney Princess palette, I have another gold um, that is called Golden. How convenient is that right there? So um, we're gonna use golden just because it's from a different palette and it's fun to switch it up sometimes. What I'm gonna do is take a brush that's a little bit flatter, sort of like this, cause we're gonna really with this gold shadow pack it on. So a brush kind of like that, that's a little bit flatter. Um, now we're gonna brush this gold. This gold is a little bit more flaky and a little bit less pigmented, which is kind of what you want, cause you want something light. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this right on the inner corners of our eye. 
But what we're gonna do is take it, and why we needed that flat brush is we're gonna pack this in a little bit more and just sort of gently tap our brush around instead of blending. And just like that, we're starting to get that gold shimmer. Now I'm gonna go back in with my Twilight palette because this one is a little bit more pigmented, so you can use both. I like a little bit more of an orangey, yellowy color in my golds. And what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm just gonna take a different brush just because this one we want a little bit more of that color, so you want a tighter, a tighter brush. So we're gonna take that and we're just gonna put it right on the inner corners. Now what I'm going to do is go back to that big fluffy blending brush and I'm just going to dust that around the edges and just really blend everything out and make sure it looks as natural as possible. Which is kind of hard when you have gold and orange on your face, but... Now this is the kind of coloring that I do for her ball gown because that's what she's mostly seen in in the parks. However, when I wear her tail, I do a genuine orange and yellow eyeshadow. I don't use shimmers. I don't use sort of like reddish. I use literal orange and yellow, you guys. Very tropical, very tiki. Um, but as you can see, we're starting to get the eyeshadow effect. It's kind of hard to see in this lighting, but um, hopefully you guys get the idea. So next thing we're going to do is eyeliner. Now this is going to be pretty easy. I'm going to do a little bit of a time lapse to show you guys this one because I want to make sure that this video is quick. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of draw it out with my finger for you. We're gonna do a simple little line and then when we get to the edge of our eye, about here, we're gonna flick it up just a little bit. And this is gonna give us just a very open princessy eye um, without not having any eyeliner on. This still allows you to do that classic line because this eyeliner also acts as a little bit of a disguise for our lashes because you'll see the band otherwise. So I'm gonna do my eyeliner and I'll be right back. Just like that, our eyeliner is done. And you can see what I mean by a little bit of a flick on the edge. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect because obviously the lashes are gonna cover it up. So um, what I'm gonna do next is take my NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil. And what I'm gonna do is just line my waterline. Just like that, you can see we have the white under our eye and this lighting, it already just makes my eyes look bigger. Just like that, our under eyes are done. And while this dries, I'm gonna go do my eyebrows and I'll be right back. Um, my eyebrows are super simple, don't worry. I like to use a little bit of a dark red pomade um, that's because I use a bright red wig. Most people say don't do the red eyebrows, but when my eyebrows are dark enough to where when I do it, it just looks like they're tinted a little bit red. So I'm just gonna follow my natural brows, fill them in with a little bit of red, and I'll be right back. So as you can see, my eyebrows are just a little bit more red. They'll match the red in the wig a little bit better. Now what we're gonna do is pop on our lashes, um, and I will be right back. So here I was listening to the Little Mermaid soundtrack, so here is me jamming out to Under the Sea. Um, anyways, just putting on some lashes. Okay, you guys, so as you can see, I have my lovely little lashes done. Now what I'm gonna do is show you guys how I do my mascara. Now, I like to do bottom mascara just so that it doesn't look like I just have white under my eyes. 
Simple as that, just a little bit of under mascara just to make sure my eyes still look bright and big, but also like real eyeballs. And then I just take a little bit just to blend my natural lashes into the fake ones, just cause they get a little bit light from the powder. And just like that, our gorgeous little siren mermaid eyes are done. The light is casting a weird shadow on my eyes, so it looks like my lashes are way bigger than they are. However, they're not, I promise. Maybe if I go far away, you can see it. But see, it just brings so much life to our eyes and volume and our eyebrows, since they're red, I especially have very expressive eyebrows, which is good for Ariel because when she didn't have her voice, the only way she could express was through her facial expressions. So I am very, very much related to her in that way. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna show you guys now how I do a little bit more face makeup and my lips and that's it for the makeup. Okay, you guys, so what I'm gonna do now is a little bit of just warming up my face a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is take my Charlotte Tilbury bronzer. I actually really like this because it reminds me of Ariel. I love how big this little shell compact is. This is the color airbrush, this is the airbrush bronzer in the color two, medium. Um, and what I'm gonna do is just take a little contouring brush, dab it in there, tap off the excess, and I'm just gonna put this under my cheekbones a little bit. So just like that, that is complete. Now we're gonna move on to blush. Um, this is my Sleeping Beauty palette from I Heart Revolution. And it has three different blushes, and I really like these, but I'm mainly gonna mix this bottom corally one with this more pinky red one. So basically those two blushes are the ones that I'm gonna use. So what I'm gonna do, take a nice big fluffy blush brush, and I'm just gonna mix these two, top off the excess. And I'm not gonna smile, because when you smile, your cheeks are up here. But when you stop smiling, your cheeks fall, so the blush is gonna be saggy. So don't smile, I know it's hard. I'm sure all of you have beautiful smiles and you're my followers so all of you guys are happy beautiful souls but don't smile so what we're gonna do is just put it right more under our eyes almost like how they applied blush in the 80s because guess what the little mermaid was made in the 80s so of course the makeup trends follow that of the makeup trends of the time and I'm taking it up my face and getting wider as I go up. So I start small and then get wide. Small and then get wide. Take a little bit more of that red and just focus this on the outer portion. A little bit on the jawline, just to warm up our face. And just like that, you can just adjust it. For me, I like a little bit more blush just because once you put that wig on, I know it sounds crazy, it takes all the color out of your face since that is such a deep red. So just applying a little bit more blush. And just like that, we have some rosiness and color back in our face. Um, and it's a coral blush because whenever people oftentimes do ask you about your makeup, the kids do, um, I like to say that I get it from the coral and I crush up the coral a little bit and use a little bit of a powder puff and just tap it on my face. That way the ocean is with me every day, even though I'm still living in the castle with Eric. So it's always fun to make up little cute things about your makeup like that. Now for my highlighter, this is what Ariel calls pearl dust. And it's the same type of thing. She crushes up pearls and taps it a little bit on her face to give her a little bit of shimmer. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, AKA our highlight, I'm gonna take a little fan brush and this is the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder. And I'm just gonna take this and put it on the very tip of my nose to accentuate my little button nose. Just like that. I'm also gonna take it down just the upper bridge of my nose. And I'm also gonna put it right under my brow bone. A little bit above my lip, a little bit on my chin, and of course on the forehead. And then last but not least, right on the outer cheekbones. Just to give me a little bit more glimmer. Now what I like to do is I have an extra glittery highlighter that I found that this stuff is like, the reflection of my lashes on here is insane, you guys, the shadows. Um, 
This is the, it's from Maybelline, I believe. It's the Master Holographic by Face Studio. And this stuff is insanely sparkly, you guys. Like, it's literally white, basically. So what I'm gonna do is I take a little bit on my finger. I like to put a little bit on my nose. Um, and then I also just mainly do this on the outer portion of my face because, like, look at that, you guys. It's so shimmery and glimmery and gorgeous. adds a little bit more glimmer to our face and just like that most of our face makeup is done so I'm gonna show you guys a few different lip colors that I like to use to achieve the perfect mermaid lip so let's get right to it okay you guys so for lips I have a couple different options of what I like to use if you want something that's gonna stay on longer and you want like a matte long wear liquid lipstick you can do anything um, sort of like this color this pinky nude shade this one is from revlon this is the ultra hd matte lip color in the color devotion i believe yep devotion that is this color um now this one is super nice it's super uh buttery and looks really pretty with the makeup and the dress however if you want to do a little bit brighter of a color like i was mentioning earlier you can use a variety of lipsticks i don't have any liquid lipsticks that are like the perfect color just because then i'd be with only a few lipstick colors. So I buy a bunch and I can mix and match to make my perfect shade. These are all from Revlon. And you can see I have a bunch of different colors. I have a more pinky, a more red, a more hot pink, purple color, and then a peach. I'm gonna start off with this peachy color. This color is called Ravish Me Red, and it's a very natural color. Um, it's a very natural red, let me rephrase that, because I'm a red lipstick girl, which means I wear red lipstick literally every day, all day. That's like my classic, just everyday color, even if I'm wearing a sweatshirt like I am right now. So I'm gonna take that color and just apply it like you would any lipstick. And just like that, you already kind of have the perfect aerial lip color. This color is really, really nice. However, if you want to add a little bit of dimension into it, you can add a little bit of, this color is called Cherries in the Snow. It's a little bit more of a hot pink. And just in the center of my bottom lip, I'm gonna apply it in the middle. And then just like that, you have, again, the perfect aerial lip color because it's corally, it's pink, it's peachy, it's summery, everything you would want for a mermaid lip. Now, what I like to do is take tissue or toilet paper and blot my lips. And this is a trick that they've done ever since like the 1930s in order to get their lipstick to stay on all day is you then blot, you saw how much I put on. I put on a lot of lipsticks so that it really, the pigment gets in there. And then I blot my lips on a piece of tissue and I keep doing it until almost no color payoff comes off on the tissue until there's no print left. And then if you want to moisturize your lips, just take that same lip color. I would take Ravish Me Red and just apply it throughout the day if you need just a little bit more moisture in your lips. Otherwise, that is how I do a classic mermaid lip color. It's corally, it's summery, and it's perfect for Ariel. So now we are feeling bubbly and gorgeous. Let's go get into costume and I will see you guys for the finished look. Okay, you guys, a little wrap up. As you can see, we have the finished aerial look on today as well as costume. Um, so basically, I also sell my wigs. I do wig commissions. So if you guys ever want to um, 
reach out and purchase a wig, you can reach out via my personal Instagram account or my business. My personal Instagram account is Haley Ever After, and my business account is Magic Mirror Princess Co. Um, and both of those are linked in my TikTok, which is also Haley Ever After. So please go follow me on Instagram. Um, I post plenty of content stuff, uh, specifically princess stuff on my business account and usually sillier, fun princess stuff on my personal account. And my personal account tends to be more my pinup and vintage stuff. Um, so please go give that a follow. Um, I hope that you guys found this makeup tutorial beneficial in any way and make sure to tag me, um, on Instagram or on TikTok or um, anywhere that you guys uh, do this makeup and let me know if it was helpful in any way. Um, I try to keep it very Parks accurate for all my characters. Um, so again, let me know if this was helpful and if you guys would like to see more because I also do Cinderella, Snow White, Aurora, um, and a few other girls. So that is my main jam. So the makeup is pretty fun for all those girls. So let me know if you guys want to see more of that. Otherwise, I hope that you are feeling safe and loved and know that you are worth it. And I will talk to all you little starfish later. Life's the bubbles. Love ya. Under the sea, under the sea Of that world What would I give to live where you are To stay here be